I'm standing here in front of a beautiful blue Porsche Taycan 4S, a 2020 model. Porsche just dropped this off for me. We're gonna do a cold weather range test. I'm going to head out to the New Jersey Turnpike, stop at an Electrify America charging station, charge her back to 100%, then get back out on the Turnpike and drive in loops up and down the Turnpike to see how far it'll go. Now this is the 4S version and it comes standard with a 79 kilowatt hour battery pack, but this model here has the Performance Plus battery pack. Uh, it's about a $6,800 option, I believe, and that gives you the 93 or 94 kilowatt hour battery pack, uh, which is EPA range rated at 203 miles per charge. So uh, when it was fully charged, I just took a look at it, it was showing more than 200 miles of range, even though this thing's been cold soaked out in my driveway overnight. Now it's about 14 degrees here now, um, that's negative 10 degrees Celsius, and overnight it got down under 10 degrees, so this car's been cold soaking for like 15 hours, the battery's got to be cold, not great for range, but that was the point of this. Want to see how well the car will do in cold temperatures. Now if you notice it does have the 20 inch sport aero wheels, which are good for lowering the drag but it has the Pirelli winter tires on it. Porsche has this thing equipped with winter tires now. We're gonna be getting some snow in a couple days. Hopefully I'll be able to do some uh, tests on it and some videos driving in the snow. But for today, it's just hop out on the turnpike, drive in loops up and down the turnpike like I do with all of our 70 mile highway range tests. Drive at a constant 70 miles an hour, see how far it'll go. Now the Taycan is notorious for doing better than the EPA range rating for some reason. So while I would fully expect this to go much further than 203 miles in normal conditions, it's not normal conditions today. It's cold, it's windy, uh, not the best for range, but that was the point of the test. We'll check back in when we're somewhere around halfway and see how well the Taycan 4S is doing. Alrighty, so we are 25% of the way in and we've covered 56 miles. The Taycan's battery is at 75% and it's showing an estimated remaining range of 170 miles. If that holds true, we'll finish up with somewhere around 225 miles, which is like 10% better than the Taycan's EPA range rating of 203 miles per charge. Now this is the Taycan 4S, as I said, and its EPA range rating is 203 miles. The significance about us beating that now is pretty important in my opinion, because this is kind of like the worst case scenario test. Um, maybe not the worst case scenario, but it's not optimum driving conditions. Uh, when we started out today, it was 14 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. It's, it's up to a balmy 19 degrees Fahrenheit now. We've got a headwind of about 10 to 12 miles an hour. Uh, and we're also riding on the Porsche's 20 inch sport aero wheels, but they have the Pirelli winter tires. And winter tires are not optimized for range and low rolling resistance, quite the opposite. So this is pretty much uh, you know, other than if you were driving in uh, a snowstorm or, you know, some other really bad conditions or driving up a, a mountain, uh, this is about as bad as it gets for an electric car. You're driving on winter tires, it's really cold, and you're at highway speeds. Although the Porsche does really better at highway speeds than most electric cars do. It seems like it's, it's really dialed in for higher speed driving and perhaps the two speed transmission helps with that. Now the Taycan is the only electric vehicle out there today that actually has a two speed transmission. So, you know, it's got a little bit taller gear for highway speeds and it, you can tell because the Taycan seems to shine when, it do, when we do long range tests with this or highway speed range tests. A colleague of mine, Kyle Connor, did a warm weather 70 mile an hour range test like we're doing here today with the Taycan, uh, and he got 278 miles out of it, uh, which is fantastic, uh, but that was in like perfect conditions, quite the opposite of what we're doing here today, and that's why we're doing this here today, to kind of say, okay, this is what it can do in warm conditions when it's you know perfect to drive, and now let's see what it can do when it's really cold. You cold soaked the battery overnight. The car was parked in my driveway overnight. It was like, it got down to like seven or eight degrees, I think at the lowest. It sat outside all night in that. I just hopped in it and went. I didn't precondition it. I turned the heat on. I turned this, the, the heated seats on, um, you know, and I just 
jump, jumped in the car and took off. So um, this is kind of like giving you an idea of how bad can it get. Uh, and um, that's why we do these range tests in different temperatures and different conditions. No range test is perfect. You can't do a range test and then have people say, okay, that's how far it can go. Because any electric car, if you can do 10 range tests, you'll end up with 10 different results. Uh, hopefully they'll all kind of be close if they were in similar conditions. Um, but we do these range tests to give people an idea of what they can expect. We'll check back in when we're about half the way there. Hopefully we should be at somewhere around 110 miles uh, if the Taycan's range estimator is correct. See you then. The only other notes I'd like to add at this point is we always check the tire pressure and make sure it's set to factory spec, which it was. And I also always check the speedometer uh, by GPS because speedometers on cars sometimes are off. And I found the exact same thing that Kyle found. Um, when the Porsche speedometer said 70 miles an hour, we're actually traveling at 69 miles an hour. So I set the cruise control in the Taycan to 71 miles an hour and put it in range mode. So we're driving in range mode. I have the heat on at 68 degrees. I had the heated seats on earlier, but I turned them off now. Um, and the tires are set. We're at, locked in at 70 miles an hour. The heat's on 68. And uh, let's see where we finish up. So we just passed the 50% point. We have 50% battery. We have traveled 113 miles and the range estimator or gasometer as some people call it, says that we can go another 118 miles, which would put us somewhere around 228-ish. Uh, amazing if we get that. Uh, remember, this is EPA range rating is 203 miles per charge. Uh, we're in the dead of winter. I have winter tires on. It's really cold. I'm driving at a constant 70 miles an hour. Uh, you know, electric cars aren't supposed to be able to even match their range rating in these driving conditions. It's one of the things that people complain about electric cars and they say, oh yeah, you know, but in the winter you can only go about 75% of what you can in the, in the, in the summer. And they're right, there's, the range is lower. But typically, it's much lower than the range rating also. With the Taycan, and there's been so much conversation about this, um, the Taycan outperforms its EPA range rating in, in all variants, the Turbo, the Turbo S, the 4S. Uh, it just simply does better. It's, it's probably has a combination of Porsche, uh, you know, under-promising and over-delivering, and also the, the, the two-speed gearbox that is better equipped for highway driving. Uh, but the, the Taycan is, is a road warrior. It's part of the reason why um, our good friend Kyle Connor just set the Cannibal Run record driving from New York to California for electric vehicles, and he did it in a Taycan. And he beat his previous record, which he did in a Tesla Model 3. Uh, I am a Tesla Model 3 owner, love my Model 3. I think it's the best value today for an electric car, all around value. But quite honestly, this is the third time I've had the opportunity to drive Taycans now. I've driven the uh, Taycan Turbo S in uh, Copenhagen in Germany. Then I drove a Taycan Turbo from Georgia to Florida here in the US. Now I have the 4S here in New Jersey. And it is my favorite electric car. If, if price was you know, no concern, I'd probably have a Taycan, one of the variants at least, in my um, garage as a daily driver. Probably the 4S because this thing is fast enough uh, and you can outfit it with all the options uh, and it, to dress it up as much as you want. Now the, the 4S starts at uh, a little over 103,000. Uh, I looked at the spec sheet on this 4S, it's about 124,000. So, you know, there's about $20,000 worth of options on here. Uh, but now Porsche is coming out with a lower base variant of the Taycan. Uh, that's gonna be available for around $80,000. Now, of course, It'll be hard to get one at $80,000 because they'll all come into the dealerships with a bunch of options. You know that. Um, one of the options that you really might want to consider that this has is the Performance Plus battery pack, and that increases the battery pack from 79 kilowatt hours up to the 93.4 kilowatt hour 
that this car has. It's one of the reasons why we're getting the range that we are. Uh, but you don't get to use all of the battery pack on any electric vehicle. Uh, with the Taycan's uh, 93.4 kilowatt hour battery pack, you get to use, um, I think it's 83.7. So you lose about 10 kilowatt hour. That's being held in reserve to protect the battery. So our range test today, our 70 mile range test today, we only have 83 0.7 kilowatt hour to use and we're averaging uh, a little over 2.5 uh, miles per kilowatt hour so I do, if you do the math that's a little bit less than what it's projecting we're going to finish it up at uh, when we fully charge the car uh, today before we headed out uh, to the New Jersey Turnpike and did this range test uh, the car was showing that we had 220 miles of range now when I recorded the video it says 219 because I had the car and the heat on and before I got my phone out to record it it said 219 but when it was fully charged it did say 220 miles we're probably going to get really close to that and that's pretty impressive that um the car was looks like it's going to be dead on the range estimation um but it also there's there's some luck involved with that because the car doesn't know what i'm going to be doing i could have been driving 90 miles an hour today and then i wouldn't have gotten 220 miles of range I could have been driving around town, stop and go. Again, you wouldn't have gotten that. So while the range estimator it looks like it probably nailed this one, so I got to give Porsche some credit for that, some luck was involved with that. But um, uh, the Taycan uh, in any variant is a fantastic car. I just love the, the feel of it, the road feel. I just want to take this car and drive it. Uh, you know, and I, 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 while I love my Model 3 and I love the driving experience of the Model 3, I wouldn't trade it. Um, for any other car in that price range at all. Um, the Taycan just feels so good to drive. And, uh, you know, um, I tell you, it's Porsche really nailed it. They didn't just make an electric car. They made an electric Porsche. And uh, I'm a Porsche fan. I had a Porsche Boxster S uh, a few years ago and uh, loved that car. And this is everything that the Boxster S was and so much more. It's faster. It feels more planted. It's quieter. It's got that, that instant torque that just throws you back in the seat. The Boxster S was a quick car. It wasn't any, you know, um, it wasn't set any world records, but it was more than fast enough for me. But this thing is just a beast. And um, especially the Turbo S that I had when I was driving it in Europe. Uh, great cars, great road feel, so well balanced. The thing just glides along the highway. And uh, I got to give Porsche a lot of credit, man. This is a great electric car. All right, so we're three quarters of the way finished. We're at 25%. The Taycan is telling me I can go another 55 miles. We have driven 165 miles to make a total 220 miles. A little bit less than where we were at when we were at 50%, but that happens typically on the 70 mile an hour highway runs. The second half of the trip usually gets a little bit less miles than the first half of the trip. I think it's the way that the cars measure the amount of energy in the battery. They're not always exactly precise. So we typically get a little less on the second half. Uh, we're going to check back in when we're done. In any event, it looks pretty clear that we're going to beat the Taycan 4S's EPA range rating of 203 miles per charge, which is fantastic considering this is dead of winter, 20 degrees out, riding on winter tires, like headwinds not good driving conditions and we still do better than the EPA range rating so you know um, in my opinion this is really impressive for the Taycan most electric vehicles nearly all electric vehicles if you drive them at a constant 70 miles an hour they will not be able to meet their EPA range rating they usually finish up less 10% less 15% some even more than that but the Taycan always outperforms its EPA range rating uh, which is something unique. It's There's very few electric cars that do that. And uh, Porsche definitely under-promised and over-delivered as far as the range goes on the entire Taycan line. So with 45 miles of range remaining, we get this please monitor range warning here, which is good. You know, you want the vehicle to give the driver plenty of advanced warning if they need to start uh, searching for charging stations along their route. You definitely can't knock an electric car for kind of nagging you once you start to get a uh, low state of charge when you're driving. But we know that and 
We're going to make it to the Electrify America station just fine. So we're about 25 miles from the Electrify America charging station that I'm going to charge at once this range test is done. And I just turned on the navigation system to take me there, but I realized the Porsche Taycan automatically preconditions the battery to warm it up for DC fast charging. So that's going to rob us of a few miles. Um, probably a good five to eight miles might get taken off this range test, which needs to be taken into consideration. I'm going to leave it on because I want to get the battery temperature up nice and high so I can get a good full power DC fast charge uh, session. But we have to take that into consideration that we're probably shaving a couple of miles off this range with 15 minutes of uh, battery preconditioning. All right, so we are pulling into the Electrify America charging station in East Brunswick, New Jersey, and we have driven 207 miles. We have 3% of the battery left, and it's giving us an estimated range of five more miles, and it was six until just before I turned the, the camera back on. So with 207 miles and five or six miles left, we're going to call this at 213 miles of range. Uh, not quite the 228 that it looked like we were going to get when we were halfway through, but still um, 10 miles more than the EPA range rating, which, you know, is just amazing. The Taycan is the only electric vehicle that just consistently beats the EPA range rating in every range test that we take. And this is about as bad as it gets. I mean, other than driving it up a mountain or in, in, in a foot of snow, it was uh, super cold today. We cold soaked the battery overnight. We got in the car this morning, it was 14 degrees. We have win the, the Pirelli winter tires on the car, which are like the worst tires you could have for range. They have the worst rolling resistance. They're really optimized for traction and grip, not for um, to reduce uh, rolling resistance. And we still beat the EPA range rating by 10 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. Um, you know, the Taycan, uh, one of the things it does good is beat the EPA range rating. Porsche definitely, you know, under promised and over delivered with the, with the range as they do with a lot of their performance metrics. That's in Porsche's DNA. If you get a Porsche and the the, the, they say that it goes zero to 60 in four seconds. When, when independent journalist gets it, then they drive it and it goes zero to 60 in 3.7 or 3.8 seconds. Same thing with the top speed. Uh, the, the Porsche uh, Taycan Turbo S, I think it was, I think it was range rated at um, 200, uh, 162 or 163 miles an hour. I forget exactly what it was. But when uh, I had it on the Autobahn last year, when we drove from Copenhagen, Denmark to Munich, Germany, um, to Hamburg, Germany, not Munich, um, we got the car up to 167, 168 miles an hour, which was at the time, I think about five miles an hour faster than what Porsche says the top speed is. Porsche just does that. They, um, they always uh, under promise and over deliver. And they have done that with the Taycan uh, range wise, at least for sure. Um, we're gonna plug in now. We're gonna do a uh, charging session here, see if it pulls the full amount of uh, kilowatts that this baby's supposed to take in. This is a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger from Electrify America. So we should be able to get some, some major power pumping into this baby's uh, battery pack pretty soon. Uh, but that's gonna be a separate video uh, for today. That's it for the range, Porsche Taycan 4S cold weather 70 mile an hour highway range test with winter tires ends up with 213 miles per charge 10 miles better than the epa range rating we'll see you next time